Hello, my name is Liam Powell, and I welcome you to the first M in the Learn STEM podcast. Just to let you guys know, I'm sorry for the microphone quality, as we are still figuring out how to fix the audio. But back to the topic. In this Learn STEM session, I'll be talking about the statistics concerning infection rates of the vaccine, the severity of illness if caught, and what is showing to be the best way to combat the new Delta variant. Once you're done listening to this, be sure to check out our other Learn STEM creators who are Melania, Nisa, and Rayanne. We make sure to teach our listeners about the world of STEM by researching a topic of STEM and giving you listeners stories, tips and tricks, or even interviews. We always find a way to entertain and teach our listeners about new subjects. Make sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to our Learn STEM episodes. So first off, we already know a few alarming facts about the new Delta variant already. It is more than two times as contagious as previous variants. Vaccines aren't 100% effective at preventing COVID-19 cases, and how the Delta variant cases have been found to be more severe and require hospitalization, especially among unvaccinated people due to studies that were conducted in Canada and Scotland. But back to that first point, the CDC website states that the Delta variant spreads much faster than other variants, and statistics show this to be true. This is because on 5-29-2021, the Delta variant only contributed around 7% to the total amount of new cases, compared to the original variant contributing almost 65% of new cases. Fast forward to 7-3-2021, a mere two-month increase, and we see that the Delta variant makes up almost 70% of all new cases. This is a 10 times increase in contribution to all new COVID cases. And even further, just 28 days later, the Delta variant makes up almost 100% of all new cases. This just shows us how its infection rates beat all other variants to a great extent. But with all of these new COVID-19 infections, the likelihood of getting sick, especially in unvaccinated individuals, is greater than before. Exact statistics of the increased likelihood of death is still being examined, but other factors are becoming heard. For example, while the Delta variant doesn't necessarily have symptoms that other variants have, like loss of taste and coughing, which are well known, it does arguably have more severe symptoms, including hearing impairment, severe gastrointestinal issues, and blood clots leading to tissue death and gangrene. These more severe symptoms may have contributed to the 35% rise of COVID-19 cases that resulted in hospitalization, but other factors, like not being vaccinated and hyperlocal outbreaks, more on that later, may also have been contributors. So with this new Delta outbreak at hand, we need to remember the severity of the situation and what we can do as individuals to stop it. As many people know, unvaccinated individuals remain the greatest concern due to getting sick and, in effect, transmitting the virus to others. This increase in transmission due to unvaccinated individuals also brings me to my other point. Kids, and immunocompromised people are at higher risk to get the virus because of the lack of available vaccinations for younger individuals and how immunocompromised people can't fight off COVID-19 and its strains as well as others can. Adding on to this, children in the week ending on August 26th made up 22.4% of all new COVID-19 cases. This rise in pediatric cases is impacted by going back to school. But still, we need to look at how the Delta variant and anti-vax and anti-mask individuals do increase concern on the transmission and hospitalization of COVID-19. So in all, what is the best way to fight against the Delta variant and stop the spread of COVID-19 in the best interest of those who can't protect themselves? The answer is actually quite simple. Get vaccinated and wear a mask. For example, the CDC stated that wearing a mask reduces the spread of particles or respiratory droplets upwards of 80%. Additionally, they stated that wearing a cloth mask can help stop around 50% of particles less than 1 micron getting through to you. To help you visualize this, a typical human hair is 50 to 70 microns in diameter. Apart from wearing a mask, though, Vaccines have been shown to function well against the spread of COVID-19, too. The Pfizer vaccine has shown to have an efficacy rate of around 95%. So COVID-19 vaccinations 
coupled with mass growing efforts, can be invaluable to stop the spread of COVID-19, especially the highly contagious Delta virus. But if individuals still choose not to be vaccinated against the virus, we may see more of hyperlocal outbreaks. Hyperlocal outbreaks happen when a COVID-19 strain hits a regional area where its people are mainly unvaccinated and the strain quickly goes from individual to individual. This rapid infection can lead to a huge amount of sickness that can quickly overwhelm medical services. These hyperlocal outbreaks are concentrated in areas of low vaccination rates, but breakthrough cases, cases where COVID-19 infection is present in vaccinated individuals, can still happen due to the vaccine not being 100% effective. But even if these things are going on, please don't feel discouraged. Do your part in helping to stop the spread of COVID by wearing a mask and getting vaccinated. I would like to thank you all for listening to this session of Learn STEM. Again, just to restate, I'm extremely sorry for the problem that we're having for the audio and if it sounds bad. But still, remember to follow us on Spotify or any other way of receiving your podcasts. Next week, we will be reviewing what we have learned over the past four weeks, and Melania, Nisa, Ryan, and myself will all be present. Hope to see you soon!